Tucker. Let's go to that. Thank you very much, Sunit, and thank you all. You're very kind. Thank you so much. It's so wonderful to see very many familiar faces. It's great to see my students here. So well done, everyone. I'm thumbs up in for you. Okay, so it's my job now to introduce to you all this evening our guest of honor. Distinguished guests, colleagues, esteemed students and enthusiasts of African history. It is my distinct honor and pleasure to welcome you to this extraordinary event that promises to illuminate the trajectory of Africa's bright future in the 21st century. Today, we have the privilege of hosting one of the most revered and distinguished figures in the realm of African history, a luminary whose scholarly contributions have transcended boundaries, encompassed a global scale, and continues to leave an indelible mark on the intellectual landscape. Our keynote speaker for this historic occasion is none other than Professor Toi Falola, a titan in the field of African history. Professor Toin Falola is a scholar and public figure of global stature. Over the past four decades, he has redefined and continues to expand the approaches, scope, and effectiveness of African studies across multiple disciplines throughout the world. He holds the prestigious Jacob and Francis Sanga Musika Chair in the Humanities and the title of Distinguished Teaching Professor at the University of Texas at Austin, where he has taught since 1991. His impact is unparalleled as he stands as the preeminent African-born academic of our times. What sets Professor Toin Falala apart is not merely the vastness of his knowledge, but the boundless spirit with which he has pursued it. Professor Falala's career has truly been extraordinary. His prolific career has yielded a staggering breadth of more than 200 authored and edited books and countless articles and chapters exploring the rich tapestry of Africa and the African diaspora. But his influence extends far beyond the written word. Dr. Falala has addressed audiences in more than 60 countries, captivating minds and hearts with his insights and wisdom, allegories and stories, just as he did during his guest lecture this afternoon in the AFST 201 class. His annual conferences, two of them, at the University of Texas at Austin and in rotating African universities have been very important sites for the advancement of knowledge and professional development for thousands of scholars. I am a testifying beneficiary, having attended the Africa Conference at Austin, Texas in 2014. The 23rd edition of that conference is scheduled to hold next April. Professor Toin Falola's editorship of several book series and journals, as well as the publication of textbooks and encyclopedias, have revolu revolutionized the landscape of scholarly research and available resources related to Africa and the African diaspora. One of his books titled Decolonizing African Studies, Knowledge Production, Agency and Voice, which was published recently by the University of Rochester Press, makes very important contributions to reframing perceptions of Africa and challenges the false and damaging universalist claims of the Western knowledge system. Professor Toin Falola is the recipient of more than 40 Lifetime Achievement Awards by very highly esteemed universities and organizations in the United States, Nigeria, and Brazil. In October 2022, the Federal Republic of Nigeria named Professor Toin Falola a member of the Order of the Niger MON, which is one of the highest national honors given by the country. He has also received 18 honorary doctorates, a Doctor of Letters degree, 
numerous teaching awards and several chieftaincy titles, including most recently as Bob Bagbiton of Ondo Kingdom, translated as the King's Historian and a well-respected royal chief. Today, we are privileged to delve into the depths of Professor Tony Falola's expertise as he unravels the narrative of Africa's promising future in the 21st century. His ability to transcend disciplinary boundaries and encapsulate the global scope of historical and cultural dynamics promises an enlightening and enriching experience for us all, distinguished guests. Please join me in extending a very warm welcome to the eminent Professor Tony Falola. not pay for that citation. <laughs> I, I'm very grateful um, and I showing I wrote one of his best poems on how he was looking for an apartment and he couldn't get one. Alienation. Today You can live in any major Western city and not eat any African, any American or Canadian food. You don't have to. You don't have to watch. You don't have to tune into any American or Canadian TV station. The Nigerian TV stations are here. Just subscribe. You don't have to watch any Hollywood movie. You don't have to. You cannot finish watching Hollywood. You can't say there is nobody that can speak your language. No, 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 no. You can if you are Igbo, there are so many Igbo people. And you see how because you cannot claim alienation, even the dynamics of transnationalism and the high number of immigrants. You see how these new theories can come into being. And he began to develop philosophy of science in terms of its value and in terms of the possibility that you can turn it into. And they also talk to the history that look at intersectionality between African diaspora culture, science, and technology. This is an advance in knowledge. And we have to celebrate them in terms of what they have contributed to. Now, I want to close by speaking to the future of Africa. Sure, is tied to three variables. Demography. African population decline. and didn't do well between the 15th and the 19th century. We began to see the shift around the 1940s that this population was rising. We did not capture that rise until the post-independence era when African leaders realized that they could not feed their own people. And by the 70s, we began to see serious issues that we did not relate to this population increase. So, a country like Nigeria, I frightened them a lot, and 25 years' time is going to become over 400 million people. It's going to double. Nobody can stop the process. So when Nigerians complain they are not doing well, I say, your problems have yet to start. Just wait <laughs> and see whether that oil money can feed 400 million people. And in 20 years, the projection is that African population will be 1.1 billion. Now, you have to set this rising demography in the context of two variables, population decline 
in some countries. People are not noticing that decline in China. That is going to fall to between 700 and 800 million from one point something billion. It's not going to increase. That's a projection. Countries like Sweden, Japan is declining. Number of children per population, Canada, US is declining. As that of Africa increases, the projection is that by 2050, it will have the largest workforce in the world. In other words, you have to be begging them to work for you. And part of that begging them is more and more migration. And by 2050, Africa is going to have, according to projection, the third of the entire world population in the number of children. They're going to have more children. In other words, we're going to outproduce you. <laughs> now, that's an advantage that has to be converted in terms of human capacity within Africa. Otherwise, some other people will make use of them. There's a rise of the right. Netherlands yesterday, the right came into power. Argentina, Trump is trying to come back. And part of what is frightening that rise is issue, are issues around migration. The extent to which they can stop that migration is going to be dependent on where they are going to get the workforce from. Because they have to go and look for labor. Sweden is saying the number of citizens, uh, non citizens, may outstrip the number of citizens. And eventually, a country like the US can end up as a republic of minorities. They're frightened. Texas is going to end up as a dominantly Hispanic state. Nobody can stop that process because demography will. So, Ebenezer, we have to study demography and link it to the future of Africa.